The owner of this week's Dream House is giving a lecture at the New England Spring Flower Show. Horticulturalist Lucinda Rooney was the floral designer for the Harrison Ford movie, What Lies Beneath. She's created an unforgettable home for herself in Vermont. <laughs> This dream house in Middlebury, Vermont is a log home on the outside and a lush garden cottage on the inside. Owner Lucinda Rooney used her skills as a horticulturalist and floral designer to make her home bloom even in the deepest part of winter. In Vermont we really only have four very strong months of growing season when we have the flowers blooming. So I wanted to make sure I could have enough in the house for the other eight months. There are teak Indonesian window boxes bursting with plants in the living room and the dining room. They get great light because the wall faces south. Most of these are forced bulbs, which were um, uh, you know, chilled and then planted so that they would come into bloom just about at the right time in the spring. And I stay with some of the simpler plants like ivies, um, lavenders, myrtles, that need a lot of light. Uh, but again, it's the humidity level that will uh, keep your plants really flourishing in the winter time. Adding a layer of stones to the bottom of the window boxes, keeping the water in there so that the water isn't saturating the, the uh, root system, but that also creates a nice humid environment for them. When trees are bare outside the window, there are cut flowers inside to add color and warmth. Other touches bring the outdoors in. There's painted ivy climbing toward the ceiling, a dining room table that's a picnic table with a cherry top, and a sidebar made out of a potting bench. I just embellished my house with things that constantly made me feel like I was in the outdoor environment. Even the artwork has outdoor roots. Artist Sarah Roach did this botanical illustration. Now this here is a, is a phenomenal piece. This is a very good friend of mine, Carol Amy Roth, and this is from a cherry burl. And I understand from Carol that a burl actually occurs when an insect or some sort of wound has happened to the tree. And this is basically the scar tissue. And Carol has this fabulous way of taking wounded wood and wood that's rotted and turning it into these fabulous pieces of, of phenomenal artwork. Lucinda says at first a log home was the last thing she wanted to build. My husband wanted to build a log home so I figured I would work with that and then turn it into an English cottage after we got it up. I don't think he anticipated that part. <laughs> when a log kit comes it's really interesting because they come lettered just like the alphabet and you start with A, B, C and you go around. Um, I quit on I and started decorating and I let him finish <laughs> the rest. The home is just 1,600 square feet, but Lucinda's fingerprints are on every part of the house. This has been a, a work of uh, ambition over several years. Um, I've traveled all over the world, and every time I go to teach or whatever it is I'm doing, something wonderful comes home with me to embellish this house. The kitchen is a perfect example. Carpenter Dave Allen Jr. helped her make it look like a British unfitted kitchen with very little storage space. This cabinet here came from Ireland. It's um, in the early 1800s. It's a pine cabinet, um, and I'm, not, I'm, I'm actually not going to paint that. I'll leave that alone because there are some things you don't want to ruin their value. Lucinda saw chicken wire used in cabinets in England and had similar cabinets made for her home. She coveted this wolf stove for years before she bought it and built the kitchen around it. It, is, it wasn't a matter of needing that stove. It was just wanting that stove. It's a fabulous piece of furniture as well as an incredible, incredible thing to cook on when you love to cook. The open feel to the room makes it a natural gathering space. Since I do love to cook so much, we can all be together while I'm having a dinner party. Just like the meals she enjoys creating, Lucinda cooked up some unique ideas to brighten up her home. The interior walls get their distressed look from a combination of painting and sanding. It happened by accident when Lucinda tried to remove the paint she didn't like. So this actually is created from a mistake and it turned out fabulous because the color is so neutral I can put anything in here and it looks great. But as I painted the walls and then sanded them off it made them really old in age so it just became part of the character. The living room fireplace was also a labor of love. The bricks came from demolished garden walls at Shelburne Farms where she was working as the head gardener. So I would bring home those bricks 300 a night to make 
I think there's 2,000 bricks in that fireplace. More of Lucinda's handiwork is in the hallway where there are vines she stenciled herself. And she custom designed this cabinet with its crown of dried flowers. I would draw this up and Dave built it for me and I had him leave six inches over the top, which was really confusing him. He wasn't sure what I was going to do with that six inches. But as you can see, I've embellished it with more dried flowers. Lucinda changes the dried flowers once a year. She replaces them with new ones from a supplier in Pennsylvania. There are more flowers in the bathroom where each fixture was carefully chosen. The first piece that would be my favorite is uh, the, the bathtub, which I actually purchased from the Great American Salvage Company before it went underwater, unfortunately, in Mount Pelier. And this old oak uh, chest of drawers was painted bright, bright red, and I had them strip that, and I put that in here. Small flower vases adorn the wall above the tub to enhance the bathing experience. After a hard day in the garden, <laughs> it's a wonderful place to be. A lot of hard work and an emphasis on the outdoors makes this a New England dream house. This has been a process of over 14 years of creating it just the way I like it. But yes, it is a dream home. It's very small, but it's a, it's a lovely home. It is indeed. And here's a look at this week's top 10 design list. Number 10 on our design list, the dried flowers used over the hall cabinet. They need to be changed just once a year. Number 9, the vines Lucinda stenciled herself. Number 8, the cut flowers. They are a welcome sight in winter. Number 7, the cherry dining room table. It looks like a picnic table. Number 6, the clawfoot tub. Lucinda got it from a salvage company. Number five, the botanical drawings. They're an unusual art option. Number four, the beautifully turned cherry wood bowl. Number three, the walls Lucinda distressed using a process she found by accident. Number two, the wolf stove. Lucinda wanted one for a decade before she bought it. And number one, the Indonesian teak window boxes. They face indoors so Lucinda can fill them with plants all year long. And you can find out more about Lucinda Rooney by checking out her website. The address is pretty easy to remember. It's lucindarooney.com.